Alright, just going to go through and refute the heretic Watchman D, his twisting of Matthew chapter 24 to try to debunk the pre-tribulational rapture in which, you know, people who reject the pre-tribulational rapture, they always have the run to Matthew chapter 24, and he does that in this clip I'm going to show you. But uh, the thing about the pre-tribulational rapture, which I, I don't like that term, you know, uh, one thing that, that Watchman D does you know, get right in this uh, live stream he did, is he does say that, you know, the rapture is kind of not really a scriptural term. You know, I'd agree with him on that. The scriptural terms would be, you know, the resurrection of the dead, you know, the uh, catching away, the blessed hope. That, those are the scriptural terms. Rapture is not really a, a scriptural term. It doesn't appear anywhere in scripture, but uh, I do plan to refer to it as the rapture just so people just know what I'm talking about, basically. Um, but again, the scriptural term is not rapture. It's the blessed hope, catching away, resurrection, etc. But uh, typical of post-tribbers is they always have to run to Matthew 24. They have no leg to stand on without Matthew chapter 24. And they always try to draw a comparison between Matthew chapter 24 and what Paul wrote about the rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And he does that in this video. So in the clip I'm going to show you, he just got done reading uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5. And he tries to draw, a, a, a his folly stems from him trying to draw a comparison between Matthew chapter 24 and First Thessalonians chapter four. Okay, I'm going to answer that because I've I've gone through this with post trippers many times, and I, I I personally I don't think he's a post tripper, um, but he denies the pre tribulational rapture. I'll just put it that way. I I, I don't, I'm not saying he's a post tripper. Okay, so don't don't you know don't don't try to take my words out of context. Um, I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he isn't. I'm just saying that he doesn't believe in the pre tribulational rapture. But I'm going to go through and refute this uh, section of the video where he tries to draw his. his faulty comparison. So let's get right into this. Let me just turn up the volume so the audio can be heard properly. Okay, let's get right into this. Chapter 20. So all that said, we're starting from here. 1 Thessalonians 4. This is the return of Christ. Pre-trib raptures, rapture believers would agree that this is indeed the rapture for all intents and purposes. Oh, and it's worth noting too, the reason why I not, you know, I'm doing this on video is because he uh, disabled his comments and he does that in all of his videos. He disables comments. So, uh, and plus I can't go on a stream because I work the night shift. So I can't just, you know, I'm often working or asleep when he is doing his live streams. So, you know, I have to do a video response. I would do it in the comments, but he disabled his comments. Which is, is a very common tactic of false prophets and false teachers, by the way. They'll disable comments. I've, I've seen that quite a lot. Some of them, some of, uh, from every group, don't like the word rapture. Uh, they like to say it's the catching up. Okay? That's fine with me, too. I'm going to refer to it as a rapture. If that confuses you, ask me to clarify. I'll do so. So, what I see going on here, he is saying, the, uh, starting up here, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. When Paul says, "Oh yeah," and another common, another big error he makes in this video is he he actually he, like he tries to say that First Thessalonians chapter four is talking about the judgment day or something like that. So it, it's like the, 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 the judgment day is nowhere in First uh, Thessalonians chapter four, but he tries to say that the second coming is the, is the judgment day. You know, again, you know, he's not a post tribber. I'm not saying he is, but he uses a lot of the same fault, faulty arguments as post tribbers. The, the judgment day, okay, there's a judgment seat of Christ for saved Christians, that you can read about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, 1 to 10, but then there's the great white throne judgment for lost people in Revelation chapter 20. So the, so there's not just one judgment day. But, and as I mentioned too, the great white throne judgment happens after the millennial kingdom. The judgment seat of Christ happens before the, uh, before the second coming, when Jesus Christ physically touches the earth. But, not going to get too much into that now, I don't want to get sidetracked, but Continuing, by the word of the Lord, it's my assertion that he is referencing what is said over there in Matthew 24, which pre-tribbers, for the most part, as far as I know, all of them, will claim that the events spoken of in Matthew 24, uh, detailing uh, Jesus Christ coming in the clouds, is not a reference to the rapture of the church. No, nope, they will say that the rapture occurred sometime before this. Uh, it's not. The Ma Matthew 24 is not 
even written to Christians. But of course, he's, he's non-dispensational, which is a whole gateway to other big heresies. But Matthew 24 is written to the Jewish people. And let me show you some uh, scripture on that. Uh, there, are no, there are no Christians in Matthew chapter 24. Because the New Testament had not even begun yet. The New Testament did not begin until Jesus Christ, until after Jesus Christ died on the cross. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter, I believe it's chapter 9, verses 15 to 19. But let's go to Matthew chapter 24. Let's see who, who this, this passage is written to. Uh, beginning at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Gospel of the kingdom. Uh, what's the gospel of the kingdom? The, the uh, presenting the kingdom of heaven to the Jews. That was the gospel of the kingdom when Jesus Christ was preaching it and John the Baptist was preaching it. Okay, what's the kingdom of heaven? Uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse number 12. And from the days of John the Baptist, even and from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, it's the physical earthly kingdom. That's how it can. That's why it can suffer violence and be taken by force. It's it's a physical kingdom. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. Some more proof on that. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And that is, uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. So, they're coming from the east and the west, and meeting at this location in the kingdom of heaven. It's a physical earthly kingdom. It's not, it's not uh, God's dwelling place in the third heaven. Because that's a common uh, misconception that people say, uh, well, the kingdom of heaven, you know, it, it's they'll, they'll try to use verses about, you know, uh, not everyone should say unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven in Matthew chapter 7 and try to say that, try to apply that for salvation. It's not, uh, it's the kingdom of heaven is not God's dwelling place. It's the physical earthly kingdom. Uh, where is it? Now, back to the whole thing of who is Matthew 24 written to, because we have verse 24 or 14, this gospel of the kingdom. Well, we're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. We're preaching the gospel of Christ. We're not, we're not trying to present the kingdom of heaven to anybody. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. When you shall see the, the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel the prophet, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso, let, whoso readeth, let him understand. Okay? The Antichrist will physically stand in a physical temple. Which is kind of a problem, because if you're a Christian, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. But how, how is the Antichrist going to stand in your body? Because it's going to be a temple rebuilt. Again, you can further proof on that. You go read um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-4. to 4. You know that there's going to be a physical rebuilt temple. But if you're a Christian, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So is the Antichrist going to stand in your body? I don't think so. Problem there. But then look at verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Um, what are Christians doing in Judea? It's the Jews. Israel. Uh, verse 17, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Uh, verse 19, and woe unto them that are with child, and then and to them that give suck in those days. Talking about people who are pregnant, women who are pregnant, or with child is the proper term. But look at verse 20, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Um, if you're a Christian, what are you doing observing the Sabbath? Okay, Romans chapter uh, 13 verse 9 lists the commands for a New Testament Christian. There's no mention of keeping the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath was a sign for things to come. Let me show you the scripture on that. I believe it's Colossians, if I'm not mistaken. Colossians 2. Alright, so I, I found the verse. Uh, I, I suspect it was in Colossians 2, which turns out I was right actually. Um, it was in Colossians 2. I just couldn't remember the exact verse it was in. Uh, but yeah, Colossians chapter, there's two verses that, that deal with the thing of observing days and that kind of stuff. And Colossians 2, verse 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath day days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay. One way you can look at the Sabbath is that it's a typology of the rest we would have in Jesus Christ. Okay, Matthew chapter 11 verses 18 to 30, or 28 to 30 talks about how he'll give you rest. Jesus Christ will give you rest and everything like that. He'll rest for your souls. Okay, the Sabbath day was, you could you view as a, a typology of the rest we'd have in Jesus Christ because you rest on the one day of the week. 
which is funny because in Watchman D, he, you know, his gospel, he preaches that you don't have any rest. You're constantly having to just do things and works and self righteous to keep yourself saved. So there isn't, there is no spiritual rest. You're constantly, you know, under pressure to save yourself. So, you know, he, ha if, if you're following Watchman D, you really have no rest because you're trying to save yourself by your uh, self righteousness and holiness, which are just filthy rags in the eyes of God. And uh, Revelation 15 verse four says that there's that God is the only one that's holy. Uh, your self righteousness won't save you. Like Paul talks about in Romans chapter ten, verse three, trying you know trying to establish their own righteousness rather than submit to the righteousness of God. It's that simple. But uh, another, another scripture. There's two scriptures that deal with this, this subject. Galatians four, verse ten is the other one. Uh, I think it's uh, yeah, Galatians four, verses uh, eight, nine to ten. But now, after that, ye have known God, or rather known of God. How ye turn again to the weak and beggarly elements, where unto ye desire again to be to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. Okay, so the Sabbath is not a command for a New Testament Christian, but yet Jesus Christ is saying in Matthew chapter twenty-four, you know, pray ye that your flight be not in the, on the winter neither on the Sabbath day. Who is he speaking to? He's not speaking to Christians. There's no there's no Christians anywhere in Matthew chapter twenty-four. See, it's called, it's called rightly dividing the word of truth, like Second Timothy two verses fifteen talks about. Um, there's no there's no Christians, and there's no and also there's no rapture in Matthew chapter twenty four. Okay, but you know I could go off about this for a while, but uh, let's continue. So we we've established who this passage is written to. Okay, he's not speaking to Christians; he's talking about Jews. But we're going to get into this a little bit further. Let's continue. And that this is some second type of gathering of the elect going on. But I believe what they're doing is some hermeneutic acrobatics. The preacher of rapture, therefore, that we see uh, uh, being taught by these people seems to be non-existent in the scripture. Otherwise, they'll say it's right here. Okay? But what I'm saying is this is the same event that we see outlined in Matthew 24. Um, it's actually not. And we're going to show that. I'll show you that in a minute. But it's not the same event. Okay? Paul is referring to, two di to a different event than what Jesus Christ was talking about in Matthew chapter 24. See, this is, this is a big blunder that the people who reject the preacher rapture, they try to always say that Matthew 24 is the same as uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and what Paul wrote about the rapture. It's not. Now let's look at Matthew 24 then. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Okay, notice the key word there, sign of thy coming. Um, who requires a sign? Okay, let me show you that. Turn to Exodus chapter 4. Uh, where is it? I think it's uh, hmm, I think it's Exodus chapter four. Here it is. Uh, yeah, Exodus chapter four, verse eight. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the second of the latter sign. Okay talking about the Jews who are being led out of Egypt, okay? Who are the signs for? Well, we have signs here for the Jewish people. And you have signs here for the Jewish people, and you have a lot of these same signs actually being repeated in the time of Jacob's trouble. But we're going to go down to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. We're going to see who these signs are for. 1 Corinthians 1, 22, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews, they need a sign. Okay. More proof on that. First, uh, Second Corinthians, or sorry, First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verses twenty-two. Uh, yeah, verse twenty-two. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying saveth serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Okay, the sign gifts obviously were for the Jewish people. Okay, they're not for Gentile Christians. We don't need sign gifts. We have the completed word of God. We don't need anything else. But uh, again, more proof on who these signs are for. Acts chapter two, which is pointing to the same passage that he tries to go to for his uh, heresy of baptismal regeneration. Acts chapter two, verses sixteen down to verse. 
uh, 21. And, and this is actually also what's being referenced in Matthew chapter 24. Again, bit uh, I've covered that in some other stuff. Uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 16. And this is that which is, was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay. And it shall come to pass that in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, and before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, who is Peter speaking to in this context? Verse 22: Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Okay, he's speaking to Israel, speaking to the Jews. The signs are for the Jews, and again, the prophet Joel. Well, he's referencing Joel chapter two, verses. Uh, I believe it's verse Joel chapter two, verse 28 down to verse 31. This is what he's referencing in that. Passage that he says it is written and spoken by the prophet Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your daughters and your sons shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show I will show wonders in the heavens and, and in the earth, and blood, sorry, and blood and fire and the pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned in the darkness, and the moon shall and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered for in Mount Zion, okay, where is that? Well, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant, remnant of the Lord whom the Lord shall call, okay. Signs are for the Jewish people. So when you have the sign that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, it's for the Jews. So yet more proof that that passage is for the Jewish people. But uh, continuing. And of the end of the world. So right here, we're speaking of this coming of the Lord. That's what they're asking about. Right. The coming that we see happening in First Thessalonians, for all I can tell at this point so far. Now, again, the, the coming of Jesus Christ at the rapture is not a literal coming. He does not actually physically touch the ground. See, again, this is the straw man argument he's building up, which is people who reject the preacher rapture. They always have to build up the straw man argument. They try to make it that the rapture and the second coming are the same events and that Jesus Christ that basically they'll say well you believe in the third coming it's a straw man argument it's not what the scriptures teach the second coming in Matthew 24 is when he literally touches the earth but getting ahead of myself okay and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end of what? He says, the end of the world. That's what they asked about. The end of the world is not yet. That's what he's saying. And many people will say, well, by world he means age. Well, I'm just going to go at what it says. He says the end of the world, okay? You want to say age, okay? The end of the age of the world, then. The end of the age of human fallen human man walking the earth if you will and I think that that's legitimate to say this generation mm -hmm. okay this generation this lineage of Adam is not going to end okay this age in which the children of Adam walk the face of the earth he says right here that end is not yet when you see this happening these wars rumors of wars for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, lawlessness, disobedience to God, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 
And this gospel, this gospel that Jesus is preaching right here, right now, throughout all the gospels, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto who? All nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And Watchman D reads, and he does not understand. I wanted to point that out. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything. Notice how he didn't really deal with the verse that says, let, let them which be in Judea. Because it gives away who he's speaking to and who he's speaking about. He doesn't really, he kind of, kind of glosses over that, but uh, not surprised. Continuing. Out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tri Again, he overlooks the fact that it's a Sabbath day, and overlooks that that verse also gives away who it's speaking to, and who it's for. Doesn't want to deal with that, because it refutes the whole argument that, oh, it's, it's uh, for Christians. No, it's not. Okay, but not surprised. Continuing. Tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Okay, I want to point out about something about that passage, okay? Uh, he went to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, I think it was verse, he was in verse 22, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, verse 21. Okay, because, you know, people who reject the pre-tribulation rapture will try to, often will try to say, well, uh, how do you know that the time of Jacob's trouble, Jacob's trouble is, is the tribulation, the tribulation. Well, first of all, the term the great tribulation or the tribulation is never used as a title of this coming time period, okay? It's just funny because a lot of the modern versions like the NIV and ESV use the great tribulation as a title in Revelation 7.14. So if you're preaching a, against the pre-tribulation rapture, then you're essentially teaching new age, or sorry, new version, which same thing as new age really, uh, type doctrine, but you're getting your doctrine from, from the new versions. But let's, let's, let's uh, show something very interesting here because um, to, 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 to basically dip out this whole argument that, oh, uh, Jacob's trouble is not the same thing as the tribulation. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation. It's a description. Such as, was, such as was, not since, the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever, no, sorry, no, no, nor ever shall be. Not the best at reading, I do apologize. Uh, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, for, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Okay? I want to notice the first passage. You know, uh, says, such as was not since the beginning of the world, nor ever shall be. Okay? Well, turn to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse number 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but look at this, but he shall be saved out of it. The days will be shortened so that he may be saved out of it. Paraphrasing, of course. It's talking about the same event. That day is great. There is none like it. Okay, Matthew chapter 24 says, you know, uh, never shall be. You know, the world has never seen anything like this. But he shall be saved out of it. The days are having to be shortened. In Matthew 24, talks about that. So he can be saved out of it. It's going to be a very, 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 very bad time. You know, the Holocaust will seem like like, like a walk in the park compared to this. And it's not being, being disrespectful. It's just, this is how bad it's going to be. It literally says that, that the world has never seen anything like this before. You know? Uh... Where is it? Sorry. Um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a second. I, I, some, the other verse kind of caught my eye for a second, but uh, because it was it was similar to Joel, Joel uh, 2, 2 verse uh, 9, 20 to 32. Sorry. Rough night of sleep. Not able to think properly at the moment. This is this is why you need to get sleep. It's it's really good for you, but if you don't get sleep, you end up like this. But anyway, but again, look, you, you compare this with Matthew 24 verse 22. Or sorry, not 25, sorry. Wrong chapter. You see, I'm still fallible. I'll admit to that. I'm, I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm still a fallible human being. I'm not some kind of infallible pope or whatever. Uh, I'm not, I don't just think that everyone's lost who doesn't agree with me. Like some of my enemies, some some of my just constant enemies accuse me of, oh, you just think you just think everyone who doesn't agree with you is lost. No, I don't, okay? I make mistakes. I, I fall. I stumble. 
that simple. But look at that, again, you compare it. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world uh, to this time, no, nor ever shall be, okay? A lot of that day is great, for there is none like it. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, it's the same event. So yes, Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation. And again, verse 22, except those days be shortened, and it says, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened, okay? So it is referring to the same event. So Jacob's trouble is the, tribu the tribulation. And again, the time of Jacob's trouble, who is Jacob? Israel. So again, giving away who this time period is for, not for Christians. That's an important time marker. Right. Because it can't be duplicated, can it? If it could be duplicated, then Jesus would be wrong in what he's saying here. Then we would have, expect to see a time uh, that was like this. But he's saying right here, this particular time, there's gonna, this time will not be duplicated. There's never yeah. going to be a time like it ever again. Why do I bring this up right now? Because it's important to do this. Because in the pre-trib, trib, the pre-tribulational rapture position, they tend to duplicate scenarios in order to give the illusion that what you're reading here is not about to inform you of the coming of Christ to take his church. To take uh, where's, where's the church mentioned anywhere in Matthew chapter 24? You have the elect mentioned there, but who are the elect mentioned there? It's the Jews, okay? Let me show you some of that, proof on that, the fact that the elect are Jews, okay? Second Timothy chapter two, verse number 10. Uh, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Um, I thought the elect were always referring to saved Christians. It's not. Uh, why do saved Christians need to obtain salvation? You're already saved if you're, if you're a Christian. It's talking about the Jews. I draw things for the elect's sake, they may also obtain salvation. So uh, there's no there's no church or Christians mentioned in Matthew 20. See, again, he totally glossed over verses 16 and verse 20 because it shows who the passage is addressing and who it's, who it's for. So he, he overlooked that to deceive his people, saying, oh, it's, it's you know, for the body of Christ. Ridiculous. Continuing. His saints. Okay? They will claim that the, these events being described, they will claim that the rapture already occurred by the time this even starts. That's what they claim. However, we have no evidence in the scripture to, to support that, is my assertion. And anybody that wants to challenge me on that, call in. Let me know in the live chat. I'll put my number up and you can call in. See, this is another thing, too. Oh, call in, you know, debate me, argue with me. See, the, the guy, he's very contentious. He just likes contention and strife. Okay? Because he basically just live streams and says, oh, come in. And, we'll, and he basically, like, pressures you to come in and just argue with him and debate him. I know because I, I was on one of his live streams and he kept saying, oh, come in, come in, you know. He is basically just someone who loves contention and strife. I'll show you a scripture on that. And this is also why I never went into his live stream. You know, partly because I was busy at the time too, but secondly, um, you know, it's not good to just be all about strife and contention like that. You know, it's okay to, to defend the faith, but just, just, oh, come debate me, come on, debate me, you know, uh, you know challenge me. It's a work of the flesh. Uh, our Proverbs 17, verse 14. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention, before it be meddled with. Okay? Now let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 5. Because this guy claims he's sinlessly perfect. Well, he's displaying the works of the flesh pretty much in every live stream. Uh, Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uh, lasciviousness, idolatry, wit idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So strife is a work of the flesh. Just wanted to point that out, because, you know, his whole his whole thing is just about, oh, come and debate me. He's a, he's he just loves strife and contention, that's all it is. I'll Skype up. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Again, who are, who are signs for? Why are the elect having to be told not to de be deceived by signs? Because sign gifts are for the Jews. Okay, if, As a Christian, 
Okay, if someone says, oh, I have the sign gifts, okay, I'd show the scriptures that says, okay, uh, I'd first of all, I'd go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, which talks about trying those who claim they're apostles. I'd go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, because I am allowed to test their spirits, okay? I know who the sign gifts are for, but the Jews, they need a sign. So again, showing who this thing is for, the signs are for the Jews, but he overlooks that. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Okay, what's that referring to? Okay, the carcass, let me show you that passage, Matthew chapter 24, verse 28. The carcass, okay? Again, it's showing what, what events it's describing. Matthew chapter 24, what was it, verse 28. For where so where the carcass is, there will the eagles, eagles be gathered together. Okay, a reference to the battle of Armageddon, the, the where Jesus Christ slays the Antichrist in his, in his army. And then they basically become bird food, essentially. Because when there's, whenever you go to a battlefield, we have a bunch of dead bodies. There's always birds everywhere. There's eagles everywhere. Because they're scavengers. Okay? This is the Battle of Armageddon. Okay? Then you have verse 29 to 31. You have the second coming after the Battle of Armageddon. See, it's, it's the events in order. It's not the rapture, but continuing. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. And this is why the pre-tribbers can't have this be the rapture. Um, immediately after the tribulation of those days. It does not say after the tribulation. It's of those days. What are those days? The time of Jacob's trouble. Because he very clearly says that the next events that are about to take place and unfold in this narrative that Jesus is giving, this discourse, they clearly occur after the tribulation. Uh, the after the tribulation, it's of after the tribulation of those days. You're making it into a title. You're adding to the scriptures. It's never. It's not a title. It's a description. That completely comes against the pre-tribulation rapture. Right. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Very important. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It's and funny because this is what the rapture, where does Paul mention any of this? In in First Thessalonians chapter 4 or First Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 54. Where does he mention stars falling from heaven? Where does he mention the, the powers of the heavens be shaken? Where does he mention that? The moon not giving her light? So if this is the same thing as what Paul talked about, uh, why doesn't Paul mention that? Okay. It's uh, kind of funny how he doesn't really address that. And then shall the appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Sign of the Son of Man. The Jews require a sign. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Uh, again, where is Paul saying that everyone's going to see this happening? Okay. Uh, Paul never talks about... And I, I'm going to cover the scriptures, don't worry. But Paul never mentions anything about all the tribes of the earth seeing the rapture. It's it's funny how he doesn't see it. Well, because he, he's lost. He's lost. He's not saved. He, that's why he can't see it. He doesn't have the Holy Spirit to guide him into all truth. He's lost. That, that's why he doesn't see it. Just that simple. Of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn again, who are the elect? For the Second Timothy two verse ten. The elect are Jews. You know, Paul's talking about them obtaining salvation. If you're a Christian, you don't need to obtain salvation. Unless you're this guy, because you're having to work your way to heaven. But if you're if you're generally born if you're genuinely born again, you don't have to obtain salvation, you already are saved. You know, first Corinthians one eighteen, you're saved, you know, past tense. But continue the parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So Likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
But as the days of Noe, or Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, who his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's actually a good passage for bringing work salvation in the tribulation tribulation period. So to all the uh, non-dispensational heretics out there who try to say, oh, salvation is always the same. Yeah. Uh, but continuing. Now that is Matthew 24. Um, and the following chapter, Matthew 25, has everything to do with what we just read here. I just read the entire chapter. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does have everything to do. It's the judgment of the nations after the... Uh, time of Jacob's trouble, se the second coming where Jesus Christ physically touches the earth and he judges the nations. Okay, but now now we're going to play a little bit more of this and just go through and why he's uh, very wrong in what he's saying. Why did I do that? So that nothing will be hid from your eyes. So uh, that nothing will be hid from your eyes. And how come you didn't address verse 16 and verse 20 which show who is being addressed there and who it's for? And why don't you address all the verses to talk about signs, you know, signs, signs, sign of the Son of Man, you know, signs, don't be deceived by signs, you know. Again, the uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty two, the Jews require a sign. So it, it's, he's not, he's, he is actually hiding things from you because he's not showing you who is, who is addressing. I'm not sitting here taking one verse from here, one verse from there, putting them together and making this all seem like something else is happening that the Lord himself is not teaching. What we just read in its plenary sense, that means there's no, uh, invoking of any kind of reasons why he's not saying what he's saying, right? right. Why, why he doesn't mean what he says. But in its plenary sense, the clear interpretation here of what Jesus just said in its most, uh, I guess, reasonable form, if anybody's sitting by hearing him, they would take this to mean that this indeed is the catching away that Paul's talking about. Right. It's actually not the catching away. Now, I'm going to show you why it's not the catching away. Okay? And again, he's saying, oh, I hid nothing from you. Well, he did hide a few things from you. Let me show you them. Okay? Now, first of all, um, people, an argument I've heard, because I, I used to be a post tripper Back when I was a false convert, part of the Stephen Anderson cult, uh, I used to be a post tripper So I know a lot of their arguments. I know a lot of the scriptures they like to use. And pretty much, I can guarantee you, you know, Every post-tripper, any video saying, oh, pre-trip rapture is false, every single video, I can guarantee you, if it's not the first scripture they use, they will use it at some point in the video, is they always have used Matthew 24. They have no leg to stand on without Matthew chapter 24. Every single one. I've not seen a single one that can that can prove their, their post-trip heresy without Matthew chapter 24. It, or Mark 13 or Luke 17 and 21. They, ha they have no leg to stand on without those passages. But... Uh, let me show you a few things, because because one of the arguments I've heard is that they'll say that oh well, um, Jesus, you know, uh, Paul was addressing the same event. Paul j just was given more details, but he's talking about the same event, and that uh, Paul was just simply told more things, you know, and, and addressed them later. Oh, you got a problem there, because uh, first of all, Paul talked about the resurrection of the dead. Let me just, let me just establish uh, my point here, okay? First Corinthians chapter fifteen. 
because you have at the quote unquote rapture. Okay, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Okay, it's a mystery, it was not known before. We shall not all sleep, but we should all be changed. In the mo in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound shall, shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. In the twinkling of an eye. Um the events described in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31, are not happening in the twinkling of an eye. They're a process of events. But this here happens in a twinkling of an eye. Hmm, interesting. Then you got uh, the dead in Christ, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Resurrection of the dead. Um, where, is the resurrec the re where is the resurrection of the dead in Matthew chapter 24? It's not in there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Go kick at uh, wa uh, Watchman D's sinless perfection heresy because right now our bodies are corruptible. They're, they're immortal. But they will not become incorruptible till the rapture. The reason why you die of old age is because your body is still corruptible. It's still wicked. It's still fleshly. It's not redeemed yet. Uh, then look at verse 54. Uh, so when this in this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And he's quoting from the first part of Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. Death is swallowed up in victory. Why? Because you no longer experience physical death. Your bodies are wicked and sinful. That's why you have physical death. Okay? But again, you have the resurrection of the dead. It happens in the twinkling of an eye. The events in Matthew 24 are a process of events. They're not happening in the twinkling of an eye. And you have the resurrection of the dead. There is no resurrection of the dead in Matthew chapter 24. Okay, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Because again, he, he, he says, oh, I covered everything. No, he looked, he overlooks these passages. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, sorry, verse 13, just to get some context here. Uh, but I would have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, okay, sleeping, Okay, people who are asleep are often referred to as being dead. You can read about that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 to 31, or 32. Uh, talking about chasing of the God, talk, ch chasing of the Lord upon people who sin. You know, talks about how many sleep, they're dead. Okay, sleeping means your body's in the grave. Okay, it doesn't mean that your soul sleeping or whatever, like the uh, Seventh-day Adventist cult says, but uh, sleeping is often people who are dead. That's who it's often referring to. But uh, that you may sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Um, what's the hope of going into this time period? There is none. That's why it's called the blessed hope in Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. Um, uh, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus Christ, Jesus rose, died and rose again, even so then which, which sleep in Jesus, okay, dead people who are saved, sleep in Jesus, will God bring up with him? For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, again, resurrection of the dead. There's no, there's no resurrection of the dead in Matthew 24. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, we're meeting the Lord in the air. Okay, it's not his second coming where he physically touches the earth. We're meeting him in the air. He doesn't come to us, we come to him. He calls us and we go up to him. It's different. Look at verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It's a comfort knowing that you're going to be, you're going to be receiving an incorruptible body and you're going to be escaping this horrific time period. But where's the comfort in knowing that you're going to have to face this horrific time period? There is none. Okay, but you have a couple problems here too, and which I'll address in a minute. But you have the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, okay? Now, uh, they, they'll say that, well, so we'll see, it's the trump of God. You see the angels, they're going with the sound of the trumpet, but you have a problem there. The angels are with the sound of the trumpet, okay? The trump of God is not the same thing. It's that simple. Uh, sorry, I was looking at the verse up there, but yeah. So you have the present, present them which are asleep, dead people, Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, okay? And notice how in Matthew 24, you have the angels with the sound of a trumpet gathering people together. It's not God himself with the trump of God calling you to calling you up. Okay. Again, the, the, like in this passage, there's no mention of angels gathering us together, gathering the, the elect together. But there is in Matthew 24. It's, a, it's not talking about the same event, which, you know, again, getting ahead of myself. So you have the uh, resurrection of the dead here, and you have the trump of God, and you have Lord himself calling us up, not the angels gathering us, to, like in Matthew 24. Now you have another problem too, because again, there's no resurrection of the dead in Matthew 24, but you have, let's go to that passage here first too. 
in verse 29 to 31, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Again, not in the twinkling of an eye, it's a process of events. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Okay, all the tribes are seeing him, but in the rapture, in the and what Paul talked about in those verses I showed you, uh, the tribe there's no mention of all the tribes of the earth mourning, because not everyone's going to see what's going on. And he shall and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So is the angels doing it, not God Himself calling you up. Now, uh, the other problem I want to address because. They'll say that, well, um, the resurrection of the dead is not in Matthew 24 because Paul was revealed to it later on and it was just Paul was given extra details. Okay, well, you got a problem there because Jesus Christ himself revealed the resurrection of the dead. Let me show you that. John chapter 5, uh, verse 25, down to verse 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they shall he and they that hear shall live for as the father hath life in himself for as, so for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in himself and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man marvel not at this for the hour is coming for the, for the hour is coming in the in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice okay look at verse 29 and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, okay, the rapture, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of the damnation. I believe that's referring to the resurrection of the people in hell to the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. The resurrection of the damnation. Why? Because they're judged and they're sent into the lake of fire. But then you also have the judgment mentioned there. You have judgment committed to the Son. I believe that is referring to both the judgment seat of Christ in for in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one to ten, and the great white throne judgment, because judgment is committed unto the Son, or sorry, authority to execute judgment to the Son. He's given him that authority. So you have the resurrection of the dead being mentioned here. You know, he, he says the graves are open and they're hearing his voice in this passage there. So Jesus Christ revealed the resurrection of the dead. It wasn't some mystery that just was revealed to Paul later on and that he just, you know, elaborated a bit more on Matthew 24. Further proof on that, turn to John chapter 11, verses uh, 26, sorry, 25 to 26. Let's start at verse 24. That's a good place to start. Uh, Martha said unto him, I, I, shall no, sorry, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. At the last day, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth, or he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this? And she saith unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So, again, you have Jesus Christ revealing the resurrection of the dead. In John chapter 5, verses 25 to 29, and John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. So, Jesus Christ already had the resurrection of the dead, you know, revealed before Paul was, you know, saved in Acts chapter nine, verses one to eighteen. So it was not some new mystery that well, Paul was just adding, was just elaborating a bit more. Okay, Jesus Christ Himself reveals it. Now, interesting thing on in John chapter ten. Uh, yeah, here it is, John chapter ten. A good, you know, reference to the rapture, which many uh, post-tribbers seem to overlook. John chapter ten, verse three. Uh, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. You know, come up hither, you know, John, come up hither. Like, like in uh, Revelation chapter 1, when John had the, uh, when John was receiving the revelations, John, come up hither, and the, and the door was opened up, and he's called up. In Revelation chapter 1, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by his name. I believe that when you when you're saved, when when the rapture does happen, you're going to hear your name called, and you're going to hear like you know, uh, like in my case, John. You know, I'm not I'm not the apostle John. Do, you know, don't try to twist my words, but you know, John Cragen, come up hither. You know, th I believe that's what's going to happen there, because he called the sheep by name. And a stranger will they not follow? Uh, sorry, actually, I'll go back to verse four. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. So. You know, people who are saved, they know the, the voice of God. They will know that, yeah, it's for them. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things, sorry, but they understood not what things, wow, you know, this is the result of not getting enough sleep at night. 
you know, or not during the daytime because I work the night shift, but uh, this is why you gotta get sleep because you can't read properly, but life lesson learned, obviously. But again, back to verse six. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what, what things they were, which he spake unto them. Now, it is a parable, but it is a good foreshadowing of the rapture, the quote unquote rapture, okay? But look at verse seven. Then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. You know, the doors open up in heaven. You know, John Cragen, you know, whoever, your name, you know, insert your name and then come up hither. And the, the door opens up. You're, you are, you meet the Lord in the air of the clouds. He comes in the clouds and you meet him in the air. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Okay. Remember, I am the door. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says about that. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and go in, and shall go in and out and find pasture. A thief come, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, uh, whose own sheep are whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I, and I and am known of mine. Okay, He's a good shepherd, which kind of makes a problem for Watchman D's heresy that, oh, you can lose your salvation, because if Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, well, he's going to throw one of his own sheep in hell, because they didn't, you know, they didn't uh, basically earn salvation by their self-righteousness. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Okay? He's not going to throw one of his own children in hell. See, see, conditional security is a very wicked heresy because it makes it basically makes God no different than Satan. Because once you're a child of Satan, you know Satan doesn't care what you know. Satan doesn't care for you. Satan will just he'll use you and then just you know leave you to your own sufferings. That's what he did. That's what he did to Judas in Matthew chapter 27. You know, Satan used him, and once he's done using him, just cast him away, and Judas he kills himself and then goes to hell confirmed in Acts uh, one, Acts chapter 1, verse 25. He went to his own place. But the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, cares for his flock. He cares for his children. He's not going to cast... Like, you know, like, like, if you have a son, you know, you're not, you're not... If your son disobeys you, you're not going to cast him... You're not going to, you know, start a campfire and throw him in it. Or start some big, you know, bonfire and throw him in it. It's, it's wicked. Okay? When you sin... And again, these people... This is a whole other issue. I could just go off about this for a while. But you see these conditional security heretics, they have zero understanding of the chastening of God. They have zero... Because they've never experienced it. Because they're lost. They've never experienced the chastening of God. But they have no understanding of the sanctification and regeneration and a changed life after salvation where the Holy Ghost comes and cleans your life up and, and uh, chastening of, of the Lord for those who are living in unrepentant sin. But they shouldn't be, but they are living in unrepentant sin and God chastens them. They have no understanding of that. And, they have, and like I said, they have no understanding of the uh, spiritual regeneration and sanctification and the new birth where the Holy Ghost changes your life and cleans your life up. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Compare that with Galatians uh, 3, 2, or 3 verse 28. You're all one in Christ Jesus. He'll have one fold. Uh, therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life and that, that I may take I might take it again no man taketh it from me but I lay down lay it down of myself I have power I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it take it again this commandment have I received of my father okay and he goes down and it goes into contention with the Pharisees but there's the rapture there okay a, for a foreshadowing of the rapture the he, the sheep hear his voice and they they come to they come to him Okay, so don't be deceived by this this uh, post trip. Uh, or not post. Again, I'm not saying it's post trip. Don't be deceived by this denial of the pre trip rapture. It is a, a very big end times uh, doctrine of devils. And again, one more point I want to bring up too is uh, the fact that during the uh, time of Jacob trouble, if you're gonna if you're gonna go in this time period, we got a bit of a problem because. Uh, and this is not really addressed to Watchman D in particular. This is just addressed to anyone who who tries to go in this time period. Because um, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, so... 
obviously a Watchman D rejects, rejects eternal security, which, you know, proves that he's a heretic. But, you know, if you take the Mark of the Beast, you go to, you go to the Lake of Fire. There's no exceptions for that, okay? But in, in under the, the Age of Grace, people call it, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of Promise. Ephesians uh, verse thir- or 1, verse 13, Ephesians 4, 30, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 22. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, you're kept by the power of God. John chapter uh, 6, verse 47 to, or 37 to 40, you know, you will not be cast out. You, Jesus Christ will not lose you. Uh, John 5, 24, you will not come into condemnation. John chapter 10, verse uh, 28 to 29, you will never perish. But if you take the mark of the beast, you will end up in the lake of fire. So it's a problem there for the non-dispensational heretics like Watchman D. But another problem I want to bring up too, just one more issue, which... Uh, I actually I forgot to write in my notes, but I just I remembered it on the spot. Uh, you have, for example, the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Marriage supper of the Lamb. But if we go into this time period, if the second coming is the same as the rapture, um, when does the marriage supper of the Lamb happen? Got a problem there, because you have the marriage supper of, of the Lamb in verse uh, Revelation 19, verses 6 to 10. Then right after that, you have I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So then you have the Battle of Armageddon, right after that, where he's fighting the Antichrist and his army. Again, you can see more details about that in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 to 10. But this is after the, the um, was it the marriage supper of the Lamb. And not to mention, too, after the judgment seat of Christ as well. So if we go into this time period, uh, what happens with the judgment seat of Christ, and what happens with the marriage supper of the Lamb? Do they just do they just get canceled or sorry, um, sorry you were wrong in your doctrine so we're gonna have to cancel these events. Uh, sorry to your inconvenience or whatever. No, uh, we have the marriage. We go, we first of all we go to the judgment seat of Christ again. Second Corinthians chapter five verses one to ten, and then we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we come back with Jesus Christ. We are his angels that come back with them. Okay, again uh, Matthew chapter twenty two verse thirty. In the resurrection they are neither married nor given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven paraphrasing of course but we come back with jesus christ but this can't happen if we go into this time period so big problem there but don't don't be deceived by this post-trib false doctrine uh, or, or just anyone who says that oh the, there is no pre-trib rapture it's a wicked heresy and it is a heresy because it, it messes up all kinds of doctrine so anyway don't be deceived may the grace of our lord jesus christ with all the brethren this, this video has been long enough but i just i just so much i could say about this issue it's a very very uh important doctrine and it's a very blessed hope it, it is the blessed hope knowing that we're going to be taken up before this horrific time period but anyway may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye